I have a word from God for your life, a prayer for your life. Let's praise Psalm 91, which is the psalm of divine protection, and may God protect, guard, and deliver our lives. Follow this prayer until the end because God will bless you abundantly and powerfully, protecting, prospering, and blessing you in all areas of your life. Psalm 9-1 is one of the most well-known psalms in the Bible, and through this psalm, we can find God's answers for our lives, relief for our souls, deliverance for us and our families. Psalm 91 has 16 verses, and we will be reading and praying based on this psalm, and divine protection will come to your home. Please also share your prayer requests in the comments of this video. I will present your prayer requests to God. Comment below with your prayer request. It doesn't matter how simple or important your prayer request is. God answers everything, from the smallest to the impossible things. God has the power to do the supernatural. So make your prayer request. If you know a family member or friend who needs to hear this psalm, share it with them. Perhaps this psalm will enrich their soul and strengthen their spirit because blessings need to be shared among brothers and sisters. So let us pray. Psalm 91 Verse 1 says, He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. This first verse shows us a divine promise for you and me, a spiritual promise for our lives. The text is very clear in saying, he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. In this verse, we see some mysteries of God and important things for our lives and protection. Notice that the text says, He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High. Who is the Most High being referred to here? It is God Himself, the Almighty God. And who is this person who dwells in the secret place of the Most High? This person is me. And it's you, and it's you. This person who hides in the secret place is us. We are guarded in the secret place of the Most High. This means that our adversaries cannot see us, cannot perceive us, because we are hidden in God. We are protected in God. God is protecting your home, your family, your work, your business, your children. Everything is under divine protection. That's why the text also says, shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. In other words, I, you, we who are hidden in the secret place of the Most High, can rest in the shadow of the Almighty, and in that shadow, we find rest. The Bible says that the people of Israel walked through the desert, and the desert sun was scorching, extremely hot. So, to prevent the people from dying in the middle of the desert, God would send a shadow where the people of Israel could rest peacefully. This shadow represents the rest of God for our lives, for our souls. Therefore, rest in the Lord. Don't be anxious about anything in this life. Simply rest. Because God is watching over you. God is protecting you. You are in the safest place in the universe. You are in the secret place of the Most High. Verse 2 says, I will say of the Lord, He is my God, my refuge, and my fortress, in Him I will trust. Look at this beautiful and impactful verse 2. It says, I will say of the Lord. You can say to God, you know what you can say to God. You can say that He is your God, that He is your refuge, that He is your fortress, and you will trust in Him. Notice that the psalmist says that God is a refuge and fortress. In other words, you can take refuge in Him. He is a fortress because He guards you. The prophet Isaiah asked, Can a mother forget her? Nursing child, those who are listening to me, whether you are a mother or a daughter, you know very well how a mother protects her child when someone wants to harm them. See, this mother guards, 
she protects. I am sure that as a mother, if someone tries to harm your child, you become fierce. You don't let anyone touch your children. It's the same with God. In the book of Isaiah, he says that even if a mother, even if a mother who has an almost divine love, even if this mother were to forget her child, the Lord your God will never forget you. And the text also says that we are in the palm of God's hand, and the walls surround us, and what are these walls? These walls are the fortress, the protection, the angels of the Lord guarding our lives. Hey, you are in the refuge. You are in the fortress, in the shadow of the Almighty. No harm, no plague, no curse can come against your life because you are secure. You are safe in the shadow of God's omnipotence. Verse 3 tells us, I am reading verse by verse and explaining each verse of Psalm 91. And verse 3 says, Surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. Look, this verse is beautiful. God is assuring us that he will deliver us from the snare of the fowler. Have you ever hunted birds? It may sound ironic, but it's true. The text says, He shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler. Those who have hunted birds know very well how it works. To catch a bird, you need to set a snare, a trap. To capture that bird, to ensnare it. And the helpless bird usually falls into these traps, these snares. God is saying that we are like helpless birds. But when the enemy sets the traps, the snare of the fowler, who is the helpless bird? It is us. The enemy sets bird snares to catch us. That's why Peter says that Satan walks around like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. So the enemy sets the snares of the fowler. But in verse 3 of Psalm 91, God makes us a promise, and the promise is that he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. Perilous pestilence refers to the forces of evil, the harmful plagues. God will deliver us from these harmful plagues and from the snare of the fowler. In the name of Jesus, I prophesy that every snare of the fowler and every trap the enemy has set against your life at this moment is now broken in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. God undoes every snare of the fowler against your home, your family, your spouse, your children, your relatives, brothers, and friends. Every snare of the fowler that brings sickness, every snare of the fowler that hinders your business, that hinders your financial life. Now, at this moment, we rebuke in the name of Jesus every snare and declare it broken against your life, your home, your family, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Receive God's deliverance in your life. You can say, Amen. Verse 4 of Psalm 91 says, He shall cover you with his feathers, and under his wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. In this verse 4, God is assuring us that He will cover us with His feathers. How can that be, God? Does He have feathers? Because here in Psalm 91, God is representing Himself as a mother. Eagle, and the mother eagle takes her eaglets and places them under her feathers. Are you an eaglet? God is the mother eagle who guards the eaglets, and the mother eagle spreads her wings and places her eaglets beneath her wings. That's why verse 4 is saying that he, God, will cover you with his feathers, and under his wings, the wings of this eagle called God, you, will be safe, and God's truth is your shield and buckler, your protection that blocks the attacks of the enemy. That's why Jesus said, You shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. God's truth is a shield for our lives. Verse 5 says, You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the arrow that flies by day. Notice that the text says we will not fear the terror by night. Generally, the forces of evil 
Entities Notice that in macabre rituals, the forces of evil usually ask for sacrifices to be made at night, at midnight. However, midnight is not the devil's hour. The devil doesn't have a specific hour, all hours belong to God. The day, the afternoon, the night belong to God. Satan simply likes to imitate the things of God. He likes to transgress the things of God. And notice that evil entities usually ask for offerings, sacrifices during the night, at midnight. But we can see in the Bible that many miracles happened at midnight. The Red Sea parted at midnight. Paul and Silas prayed and sang at midnight, and there was an earthquake, and they were set free. The Bible says that at midnight the bridegroom called, and the virgins, the brides, responded to the bridegroom. In other words, several Bible verses talk about miracles happening at midnight. So, midnight is not the devil's hour. However, the enemy likes to imitate God. That's why he asks for wicked deeds to be done at midnight. But in verse 5, God is showing us the following, you shall not be afraid of the terror by night. God is telling us here not to fear, not to be afraid of the works of evil. I often receive messages from people who are terrified of wicked deeds that have been done against them. And I always present this. Psalm because we don't need to fear the works of evil. Why? Because the one who is with us is greater than the army, greater than the navy. Greater than the air force, greater than hell, greater than the angels, greater than the universe. The one who is with us is the Almighty, the one who dwells in the hiding place of the Most High, of the Omnipotent. You can rest assured. So, do not be afraid because you are protected by God. Take hold of this protection. Keep this word in your heart, you shall not fear, for I will not fear the terror by night. I will not fear the terror by night because I dwell in the hiding place of the Most High and in the shadow of the Omnipotent. I can rest. Because He is our fortress, and we have Him as our refuge. For this reason, we do not fear the terror by night or the arrow that flies by day because the enemy does not only work at night. Verse 5 clearly shows us that we will not fear the terror by night or the arrow that flies by day. What does it represent? What does the arrow that flies by day mean? The arrow that flies by day represents the wicked attacks that happen during the day. However, we do not need to fear. Why? Because God is our refuge and fortress. When you experience fear, it means you are not trusting in divine protection. Because the text clearly shows us that He is our shield and stronghold, that He guards us under the shadow of His wings. So why fear? What is the purpose of fear? Do not be afraid. The Bible says in the book of Isaiah that no weapon formed against you shall prosper, and every tongue that rises against you in judgment you shall condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. In other words, you have 24-7 protection. Jesus made us a promise, saying, Behold, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. You have divine protection in your life. Do not be afraid. Let's continue. Verse 6 Nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. Here, the psalmist is still talking about the works of evil, the forces of darkness. Verses 5 and 6 are closely related. You shall not fear the terror by night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that walks in darkness. These are demons that roam in the darkness, nor the destruction that lays waste at noonday. In other words, God is telling us not to fear the forces of evil. I don't understand how a Christian can fear the forces of evil. 
You cannot fear the forces of evil because greater is he who is with us than he who is in the world. Amen. Verse 7 is a well. Known verse and it says, A thousand may fall at your side, and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Look. The psalmist is saying that even if a battalion, even if an army of demons, of evil forces, falls at your side, falls at your right hand. Nothing will happen to you. Why? Because you are protected. This is the protection of God, my sister, my brother. Verse 7. Let me read it again because this verse is so beautiful. A thousand may fall at your side, and ten thousand at your right hand. But it shall not come near you. Did you understand? You are protected by God. Nothing can touch a single hair of yours if you believe with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength in God's promise recorded in this Psalm 91. A thousand may fall at your side, and ten thousand at your right hand, but you will not. You will not be affected because God is with you. Say Amen. Say, I claim this. Word for myself. Verse 8. Only with your eyes shall you look, and see the reward of the wicked. In this text, God is telling us through. The psalmist that while we rest, while we receive God's protection and deliverance, we will witness the reward of the wicked, God's judgment. Upon the wicked. We will see with our own eyes God's justice being done. Verse 9. Psalm 91 says, Because you have made the Lord. Who is my refuge, even the Most High, your dwelling place? Look, the text reinforces what was said in verse 1 and verse 2, reminding us once again that God is our refuge, and in the Most High, we can dwell. Amen. Now, verse 10 says, No evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. Let me repeat because this verse is too beautiful. Glory. No evil shall befall you. What is God saying to you? Nothing will happen to you because I protect you, I guard you, I deliver you, I defend you. God is not saying that to or three or four or five evils will happen in your life. God is not saying that all the evils will happen in your life. No, no, no. God is saying that no, absolutely no evil shall befall you. No evil shall befall you. It means that nothing will happen to you because God protects you. But you need to believe with all your heart, trust in God with all your soul, knowing that He guards and defends you, that He is your help, your refuge, your fortress. No evil shall befall you, and no plague shall come near your dwelling. Hey, your dwelling is protected. The north of your dwelling is protected. There are angels of God spread around. The north of your dwelling, in the south of your dwelling, in the east, in the west, in the four corners around your dwelling, on the roof of your dwelling. God is sending mighty angels now to your dwelling. Mighty angels, guardian angels, angels of God, mighty in battle, are being sent at this very moment to protect, to guard, to deliver your dwelling because that's what angels are for. Angels are divine protectors, and they are surrounding your dwelling to protect your life right now. Feel peace in your soul. Feel peace in your heart. There are angels of God surrounding your dwelling, protecting your life in the name of Jesus. No evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come. Near your dwelling, your family, the lives of your children, the life of your husband, the life of your wife, your work, your friends, your colleagues, your classmates. No harm will come to you because God is protecting you. Amen. Say Amen. Comment below. Amen. Verse 11. Tells us why. 
because he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. This verse 11 is so beautiful. God is saying that the angels of the Lord will guard us in all our ways. Do you know what this means? When you go to the bakery, the angels are guarding you. When you go to the bank, to the lottery, the angels are guarding you. When you go to the mall, the angels are guarding you. When you go to church, the angels are guarding you. That's why the text says that he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. Verse 11. So, all your ways are guarded by God. Rest, trust. Be at peace. Now, there is a caveat. Jesus said, you shall not put the Lord your God to the test. Of course, if you see a deserted street, you're not going to test God and say, God is guarding me, so I'll pass through here recklessly, imprudently, and God will protect me. God guards us when we are in accordance with His will, right? Don't stray from the Lord's will, don't stray from the Father's will. Stand firm in the will of Jesus and be prudent. There are many people who may say, since God is guarding me, I'll accelerate the car to over 100 km per hour, and God will protect me, right? Negative. God will protect us, but we also have to be prudent. We have to be vigilant. God protects, but we have to do our part as well. When Satan told Jesus to jump from the pinnacle, Satan quoted this verse to Jesus, saying that the angels would protect and guard Jesus so that he would not strike his foot against a stone. But Jesus said to Satan, You shall not put the Lord your God to the test. In other words, we have divine protection. God guards us with his angels in all our ways, but that doesn't mean we shouldn't be watchful, on the contrary, we must also be vigilant. The street is deserted. Avoid passing through the deserted street. Are you hearing news of crime in a particular area? Avoid going through there because God provides greater protection. We need to be prudent. That being said, let's move on to the next verse, verse 11. For he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. Verse 12 says, they will bear you up in their hands, lest you strike your foot against a stone. God is saying here that the angels will provide protection for us in the smallest details. Yes, we have divine protection. When human resources run out, God's resources arrive. If there is no human alternative, then God's alternatives come into play. Understand this. If there are no other possibilities and you have to pass through that place, then God will guard you. But if there is a possibility for you to be vigilant and make a better choice, then we cannot test the Lord our God. However, God is giving us the assurance that He will guard us, even in the smallest details. When the text says that the angels will guard you, so that you do not strike your foot against a stone, it means that God will protect you in every aspect of life. Amen. Next verse, verse 13, says, You will tread on the lion and the adder, the young lion and the serpent you will trample underfoot. This text helps us understand what Jesus said in Luke chapter 10 when he sent out the seventy disciples on a mission. The story is narrated in Luke chapter 10. Jesus gave them power and authority. He said, Behold, I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions, and over all the power of the enemy, Satan, the forces of evil. In verse 13 of Psalm 91, the lion and the venomous serpent are being described. And God is saying that we will tread upon the lion and the serpent, we will trample them underfoot. But the serpent will be under the feet of the sun or the son of the lion. God is saying that we will tread upon the lion and the serpent. Why is the enemy depicted in the Bible as a lion? 
Even Peter says, Satan walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. The word Satan is a Greek word and means serpent. In the Garden of Eden, the enemy presented himself to Eve in the form of a serpent. So Satan is the false lion because the true lion is Jesus, the lion of the tribe of Judah. But God is saying that he will grant us spiritual authority to trample upon the works of evil. This means that God is saying, I am giving you authority to overcome the forces of evil. Treading upon the forces of evil represents that you will tread upon the lion, the serpent, you will put your feet upon the offspring of the lion, the serpent. Verse 13 is stating that God will give us spiritual authority to crush, tread upon, overthrow, and undo the forces of evil. Verse 14 says, Because he has set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him, I will set him on high because he has known my name. This verse is God speaking to us, saying what? Because he has set his love upon me, meaning because we have loved God, because we love the Lord. For this reason, because of this love we have for God, God is saying that because of this love, he will also deliver us, set us on high. Because we know his name. These are the privileges of loving God, of having a friendship relationship with the Creator. When we are friends with God, we have in Him our refuge, our strength, our spiritual protection 24-7. Verse 15 says, He shall call upon me, and I will answer him, I will be with him in trouble, I will deliver him, and honor him. God is guaranteeing to us in verse 15 that when we call upon His name, He will answer us. He will be with us in times of trouble, He will deliver us, and He will honor us. God is giving us the assurance that in moments of anguish, we will not be alone. Even though moments of anguish may seem dark, even though they may seem lonely, devastating, God is there, guarding our lives. And what about that story we all know about the footprints in the sand? A man walking on the sand saw the scenes of his life in the sky. And as he walked on the sand, he saw two sets of footprints, his own and Jesus' footprints, depicting the most beautiful moments of his life. And suddenly, as the scenes changed and the saddest moments of his life began to appear, only two footprints were seen in the sand. Then the man said to God, In the moments when I needed you the most, Lord, you left me alone. Then God says, No, those footprints in the sand are not yours, they are mine. So he asks, And where are my footprints? Then God says, Those footprints are mine. Yours. Didn't appear because at that moment I was carrying you in my arms, meaning that in times of distress, God is carrying us in his arms. That's why Jesus said, Who needs a doctor, the saint or the sick? So Jesus came for the sick. If you are tired and burdened, God can relieve you, and receive relief for your distress, relief for your soul, and peace in your spirit in the name of Jesus at this moment. And verse 16 concludes Psalm 91, saying, With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. When the text says, With long life will I satisfy him, God is giving us the promise that we will have a long life, that we will have an abundance of days. Long life to those who love the Lord. Long life to those who trust in God. Long life to those who have God as their refuge, to those who have God as their friend. Long life to those who seek the face of God. And God says more, I will give you long life, abundance of days. And I won't stop there. I will give even more. I will give my salvation to those who love me, says the Lord. These are the blessings. The blessings of Psalm 91 are 16 verses, and here we have read verse by verse, explaining each one. A blessing, isn't it? Comment down below.
in the comments what you thought of the explanation of each verse of Psalm 91. Share it with a friend. Some people read Psalm 91 and don't understand, but through this explanation, you were able to understand verse by verse. If you have any questions, comment below, and I will be reading. Amen. If possible, I will be reading. If there are many comments, it may take me a while to read, but I will. Make an effort to read the comments. So leave your prayer requests because we are going to pray now. Hold on, the video is not over yet. We are going to pray. Now I want to pray the prayer of Psalm 91 because the first step was for you to understand Psalm 91. Now that you understand the meaning of each word of Psalm 91, let us now, based on what we have read, what we have learned, pray, pray asking God for the blessings of Psalm 91 in our lives. Wherever you are, close your eyes. If you can, leave your prayer requests in the comments, and let us pray with faith because the prayer of faith will save the sick. The prayer of faith will heal the afflicted. The prayer of faith will open doors of employment. The prayer of faith will make supernatural. Miracles happen in our lives. Close your eyes with me and let us pray in this moment. Holy Spirit of Truth, Almighty God, Omniscient omnipresent, and creator of heaven and earth. You are Lord in the heavens, you are Lord in the seas. You are the Lord of the stars. You are the Lord of the universe. We invoke your name, O Most High God. God who reveals himself in Psalm 91. You are the Most High, our divine protection. And we ask for your blessing, O Lord, in our lives. Your grace manifested, Holy Spirit of Truth. I present the life of this woman who listens to me. The life of this man who listens to me. God, through this prayer, come, Lord, pour out your power, your grace, your anointing, your virtue, your strength. Come and grant spiritual strength to your people. Come and baptize with your spirit, renew spiritual forces, energies. God, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, send your cloud, your protection, your glory, your power, your love, O Almighty God. Forgive, O Lord, the sins of your people. Forgive all iniquity. Come, Lord, cleanse our soul, our spirit, forgiving. Our faults, our weaknesses committed through thoughts or feelings, actions, and gestures. Everything, Lord, that has been disapproved by you, everything, Lord, that has displeased and saddened your Holy Spirit, and that we have spoken, thought, or done. We ask for forgiveness at this hour. Forgive us with your precious blood, Lord, cleanse our altar, cleanse our garments, making them whiter than snow. God, in the name of Jesus, come, Lord, with your power, come and restore marriages, come and restore relationships, come and restore families. God, we ask you, Lord, for all the people who are homeless, for all the people who have lost their loved ones in tragedies. Come and guard, come and deliver, come and protect in the name of Jesus, sending your provision, sending your mercy. Give, Lord, deliverance to your people. God, we do not fully understand your will, but we do not surrender to your will, asking for your mercy, asking, O oh God, for your peace over Brazil, over the world. Come and rebuke wars, come and rebuke conflicts. Come and bring your peace, Lord, into families, come and restore, God, in the name of Jesus, the financial life of your people, bless them. Sentimental life of your church, bless in the life, Lord, of this woman who listens to me, who hears me. Come and restore the sentimental life, the financial life, the family life in all areas of her life, of his life. Come and bring health, come and bring peace. 
If there is any illness, place your hand on your illness. If there is someone who is sick in your family, place your hands on the illness in the name of Jesus. Pray these words with me in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Every illness, leave now, disappear now, vanish now in the name of Jesus. God, in the name of Jesus, heal the illnesses. Now, in the name of Jesus, you are the God of Psalm 91. The Most High, our refuge, our stronghold, and we trust in you. Deliver us. From evil, deliver us from evil. O God, protect our house from the violent man, the bloodthirsty man, the corrupt man. God, deliver. Lord, the house of your servant, the house of your servant from all evil. In the name of Jesus, guard our lives under your mighty hand. Under your protection, under your blessing, Lord. Release upon us the blessings of Psalm 91, may each verse of Psalm 91 be fulfilled in our lives, guarding us, delivering us, protecting us, defending us, granting us, Lord, abundance of days, long life for our lives, long life with health, with prosperity in the name of Jesus. Receive now, you who are listening to me, you who are hearing me, woman of God, man of God, who is listening to me at this moment. Receive health in your body, receive prosperity in your life, financial prosperity, emotional prosperity, family prosperity, prosperity in all areas of your life. Receive now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen and thanks be to God, say yes with me. I take possession of my victory. Repeat once again, I take possession of my victory. I take possession of my blessing. I take possession of my blessing, my victory, my prosperity. In the name of Jesus. Amen. May God bless your life. May God bless our lives, because if you are blessed, I am blessed too. When one wins, everyone wins because we are the family of Jesus. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord be in your heart. May the blessings of Psalm 91 be in your home. Today we will be praying Psalm 1. I am absolutely certain that God will speak strongly to your heart through this prayer. Stay until the end because there is a response from God for your life in every area, finances, relationships, family, marriage, every aspect. God has a blessing to deliver to you. And Psalm 1 is a very powerful psalm. We will be reading it, praying it, and God will speak to you through my life. Before we begin, don't forget to leave your prayer request in the comments because I always read the comments and present each prayer request before God. If you're not subscribed to the channel, please subscribe and activate notifications to receive new prayers. Consistently. Share this video with a friend, for it will certainly be a blessing in all our lives. Just see what God is revealing to us through this mighty psalm. Psalm 1 says, Blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, nor stand in the path of sinners, nor sit in the seat of scoffers. In this verse, we can find a hint, a victorious counsel for our lives. And what is this victorious counsel? The Word of God tells us that we are blessed when we do not walk in the counsel of the wicked. Whether in our marriage, our work, or our lives. Never listen to the advice of people who are far from God, for their counsel can destroy your life. Instead, always listen to the advice of men and women of God, because through a word of faith, through guidance, you can receive great blessings. And verse 1 of Psalm 1 tells us that blessed is the person who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked nor stand in the path of sinners, nor sit in the seat of scoffers. In other words, we cannot have friendships with people who bring us down. 
deceive us, mistreat us, or do not desire our success and growth. There are people listening to me now, and many blessings in there. Lives are being hindered because they associate and converse with negative people. When we surround ourselves with negativity, we end up receiving that negativity as well. Therefore, we need to surround ourselves with positive people, with people of God. There are blessings that are withheld because a person associates with bad influences. There is a saying that holds a great truth, tell me who your friends are, and I'll tell you who you are. Walk with people of God, walk with women of God, with men of God. Do not have friendships that distance you from the Lord because that can be detrimental to your life. That's why Psalm 1 tells us, Blessed is the man. The man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, nor stand in the path of sinners, nor sit in the seat of scoffers. And in verse 2, it says, But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law, he meditates day and night. This person is one who meditates on the word of the Lord day and night. You know what happens to this person. Verse 3 shows us, He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, that brings forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf also shall not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. In other words, when we please God, when we stand firm in His presence, everything we do prospers. My sister, my brother, there are things that often don't prosper because we are not standing firm on the Word. But when you are firm in the Word, everything will prosper. Sometimes, there may be situations that seem not to be prospering, but in reality, they are prospering. And I want to tell you that God has prosperity for your life, prosperity in all areas, financial prosperity, spiritual prosperity, and family. Prosperity. But we must obey the presence of the Lord. We must be obedient to God. Our obedience to the Father is very important. It is crucial that we walk with people who draw us closer to God, people who lead us to victory, and people who help us grow. If you have been walking with someone who brings you down, drains your energy, distance yourself from these negative people because they are obstacles in your life. That is why it is vital for us to walk in the Word of God and walk with people of God. The Word says, He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, that brings forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf also shall not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. This is the blessing of Psalm 1. What is the blessing of Psalm 1? The blessing of Psalm 1 is that if we stand firm in the presence of the Lord, we will be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, which bears fruit in its season, and its leaves do not wither. In other words, you will be a prosperous person, and I want to prophesy in your life that you will be. You are a fruitful tree, and you will bear fruit. And if you are producing fruit, you will produce even more fruit because God has prosperity for you. God has blessings for you. See, God loves you so much, God loves you so much. The Bible says that He is jealous for us. God does not want to lose our lives to the enemy. God loves us deeply. That's why God asks us to be obedient to His Word, obedient to His commands. And the Word of God tells us even more, the wicked are not so, Psalm 1. But they are like chaff that the wind drives away. Therefore, the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. Why? Verse 6. Because the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. In other words, living far from God is a great danger. We need to be close to the Lord. If you are going through a difficult time, do not doubt God. He will surprise you and grant victory in your life. You know why? Because you are a tree. Planted by the rivers of water. You are God's eagle, 
and eagles are meant to soar in high places. Eagles were not made to fly with sparrows. Eagles were made to fly with eagles. You are a lion. You are a lioness. You know why? Because the Bible says that Jesus is the lion of the tribe of Judah, and you are a child of God. You are a daughter of the Lion of the tribe of Judah. You are a son of the Lion of the tribe of Judah. So, let me ask you, what is a child of a Lion? A child of a Lion is a Lioness, a child of a Lion is a Lion. Therefore, if Jesus is the Lion of the tribe of Judah, and we are his children, then we are Lions and Lionesses. Lions do not walk with wolves, Lions walk with lions and lionesses. We cannot mix with negative people, gossipers, envious individuals, or those who constantly lie. Because when you associate with these kinds of people, little by little, you also start committing the same sins. If you stop and have a conversation for a minute with a gossiper, before you know it, you get involved in gossip too. It's very difficult for you to sit with a gossiper and start gossiping and not fall into that sin. That's why we need to be watchful. Watchful of who we converse with. Watchful of whom you share your secrets with. There are people who approach you wanting you to confide in them, but in reality, that person is only near you to witness your downfall. There are people who come close to you, not to help you, but to bring you down. But the blood of Jesus Christ has the power to deliver us and keep away all these evil people from our lives. It is clear and evident that there will always be evil people trying to enter our lives, but we have to flee from the appearance of evil. You are chosen by God, and that is why God is using me to bring this word to you. Do you know who our worst enemy is? Our worst enemy is not the one who openly declares themselves as your enemy. Our worst enemy is the one who claims to be our friend, but in reality, they are a false friend. They say they are your friend, but deep down, they want to witness your downfall. They say they love you. They say they care about you and even celebrate your success, but in truth, they want to see you fail. Therefore, we must be very cautious. Of course, true friends do exist. Of course, there are people who genuinely want to see our success, growth, and happiness. Unfortunately, there are also people who don't want to see us happy, who don't want to see us thrive or progress in life. But I have news for you, even if everyone else doesn't want to see you succeed, even if there's a group of People out there hoping for your downfall, they will be ashamed and confused. Why? Because you will not fall. You will remain standing. You will not lose, you will conquer. And all those who want to witness your defeat will have to witness the victory of God in your life, in the name of Jesus. Hey, a time of victory is approaching for you. A time to smile is coming. The time of suffering is about to end. The time to sing has arrived. But be watchful. Now, stand firm in the presence of the Lord because God will honor your faith. God will honor your hope, so simply rest your soul and distance yourself from all negative people, from those who have no commitment to God and want to drag you into the world. You might say to me, but can't I talk to a non-believer? Of course you can, but we need to understand that we are here on this earth to influence and win people over to Jesus. We cannot sit in the company of mockers. In other words, we should not join a group of people who speak ill of the gospel, who criticize A and B, who speak poorly of C and everyone else. Sister, brother, you cannot be part of that circle. Let's be vigilant. Let's pray. Let's be cautious about the people we engage with, the conversations we have. 
Let's be attentive because Psalm 1 reveals this to us. Psalm 1 reveals that we need to seek the presence of God and avoid sitting among mockers. If we act and live accordingly, we will be like a tree planted by streams of water. Our leaves will not wither, and everything we do will prosper. Amen. I want to offer a special prayer for your life. I want to pray for you so that the blessings of Psalm 1 may descend upon your life and that you may be like a tree planted by streams of water. May everything you do prosper greatly for the glory of God. Let's pray. Holy Spirit of Truth, we stand in your presence. I want to lift up the life of your servant, the life of your child who is listening to me at this moment. God, intervene with your providence and grant great victories in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Open doors and bestow your blessings upon us. God, pour out upon us the blessings of Psalm 1. May we be trees of righteousness and may we bear fruits, fruits of blessings, victories, and achievements. Lord, bless our lives. Lord, open the doors and floodgates of heaven. Pour out blessings and showers of blessings upon the lives of your people. We ask this in the name of Jesus, and we thank you in advance because you are faithful, you are awe-inspiring, Lord. May the blessings of Psalm 1 be upon the life of your daughter, upon the life of your son. God, grant strength, grace, and encouragement. God, keep away from us. All negative friendships, all friendships that wish to see our downfall, all false friendships that desire our ruin. Lord, keep away from us the wicked man. You guard us under your blood, and may you bless our lives. In the name of Jesus, we ask, and in the name of Jesus, we thank you. Amen. Thank God and take possession of your victory. Take possession of your blessing. You are a tree of righteousness. You are a tree that bears fruit in the presence of God. Remain steadfast in the presence of the Lord, for great is the reward that comes from above, from God. Praise be to God, who grants us victory through the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. I extend my heartfelt greetings to all my brothers and sisters, with the holy and mighty peace of our Lord. May God bless your life, and may He bless your family in a special way. We will be praying the 23rd Psalm, the Shepherd's Psalm, one of the most well-known psalms in the Bible. This psalm will be a blessing for your life and your family. May God bless you as you listen to every word of this powerful psalm until the end, for each word of this psalm carries a blessing for you and your entire family. We will study verse by verse and pray through this powerful psalm. I have a special request for you, share this psalm with a friend, a loved one, or a family member. It will undoubtedly be a blessing in their life. Also, Subscribe to our channel and enable notifications to receive more prayers and psalms. Today, we will pray the 23rd Psalm, the Shepherd's Psalm. It is the most read and well-known psalm in the Bible, written by David. Verse 1 tells us, The Lord is my shepherd. This signifies a relationship. When the psalmist said that the Lord was his shepherd, he was expressing that God is the one who takes care of him, defends him, protects him, and keeps him safe. That's why he is my shepherd. When we observe the relationship between a shepherd and a sheep, we realize that the shepherd is willing to give his life for the sheep. And we are the sheep of God. The Lord is our shepherd, and this is the relationship God has with us. This is the intimacy we have with the Father. Remember that you are a sheep, and God is your shepherd. He takes care of you, protects you, defends you, 
and keeps you safe. The 23rd Psalm continues, I shall not want. This means that He will not fail me. In moments of struggle, He will be with me. I shall not want means that He provides for me. He grants me my needs, whatever I require, He will supply. He is your shepherd, and you will lack nothing, absolutely nothing. He will supply your needs, so you shall not lack anything. He makes me lie down in green pastures, the phrase, He makes me lie down, means that He makes you rest, He gives you rest for your heart. In green pastures, means that this faithful shepherd carries us in his arms and places us in lush pastures. He makes us lie down, he makes us rest in a green and prosperous place. Green pastures symbolize prosperity. He makes you lie down in prosperity, he makes you happy in the arms of this faithful shepherd. He leads me beside quiet waters, this is the care of this shepherd. He gently guides me to calm waters. It is the Lord who guides you, directing your steps to make the right decisions in life. Don't worry because the one who takes care of you is the faithful shepherd, the good shepherd who leads you to calm waters. Quiet waters are a place of refreshment, a place of tranquility. This shows God's special care for us. The Apostle Peter said, Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. The one who cares for you created the heavens and the earth, the sea and the stars, and he takes care of you in every detail. And he restores my soul, the 23rd Psalm revives my soul. This represents inner healing. Our soul is where all our feelings reside, all the emotions of our life are within our soul. If you feel sadness, it comes from the soul. If you feel anguish, it comes from the soul. If you feel joy, it comes from the soul. In other words, all the positive and negative emotions come from our soul, and the 23rd Psalm tells us that he restores our soul. To restore means to bring relief to your soul. If you, who are listening to me, have a troubled soul, a sad soul, a weary soul. The Good Shepherd is coming to meet you at this moment, refreshing your soul, bringing peace to your spirit, bringing peace to your life. Believe that He will restore your soul. The 23rd Psalm also says, He guides me along the right paths, this represents God's complete guidance. For those of you who are feeling lost, unsure of which path to take in life, whether to travel or stay, questioning if a relationship is from God or not, or contemplating whether you should remain in your current church, perhaps you have doubts in your heart and feel without God's guidance, let me minister to your heart and tell you this. He will guide you along the paths of righteousness. This is a promise from Psalm 23, He guides me along the right paths. In other words, the Lord will lead your steps towards what is just and right, so that you can make the right decisions. So, let the Good Shepherd guide you, the Shepherd of Psalm 23. The text continues, For His name's sake, He leads me in the paths of righteousness. For his name's sake, means the purpose of our lives is to glorify the name of the Lord. For his name's sake, means, I will do things in your life for the sake of my name. I will bless your financial life, your relationships, your family, and your health for the sake of my name, says the Lord. It is for the sake of this precious and powerful name that he will guide you. That's what the psalmist is saying. For the love of this beautiful and wonderful name, for the love of God's name, He will guide you along the paths of righteousness. The 23rd Psalm further states, Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, 
What does this valley of the shadow of death that David refers to represent? It represents trials, struggles, and adversity. That fight where you thought, I will die in this test, I will perish in this trial. Have you ever faced a similar situation where you thought you would perish in the midst of a struggle? Let me know in the comments if you have experienced the valley of the shadow of death, that trial, that adversity where you thought you would perish. But the psalmist is saying, Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, I will fear no evil represents faith. When we are going through the valley of the shadow of death, through the valleys of testing, anguish, struggles, and disappointments, we need to hold on to our faith. We need to believe with all our hearts that we will not perish or die because the one who is our shepherd is the way, the truth, and the life. He is the path that directs your steps, that illuminates your spirit. He is the life that rescues you from death. If you are going through a trial, make your prayer request because we will pray for you. This was the confidence of the psalmist, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. For you are with me represents God's faithfulness to us. When the psalmist David said in Psalm 23, Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me, it signifies God's faithfulness to us. Even when going through the valley of the shadow of death, God is with you. In Matthew chapter 28, Jesus said, Behold, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. From Monday to Sunday, God is with you to deliver you, protect you, guard you, restore you, and bless you. This confidence of the psalmist made him believe that even if he walked through the valleys of shadows and death, he would not fear. The one who is with you is greater than the valleys, greater than the struggles because the Lord is your shepherd. The expression, for you are with me, also refers to the shepherd's staff and rod. With the staff, the shepherd corrects, and with the rod, the shepherd pulls the sheep. In other words, whenever we, the sheep of Christ, are walking in the wrong path, he will use the rod to correct us and bring us back to the path of victory, the path of peace. That's why the psalmist. It says that your rod and your staff, they comfort me. In other words, they comfort me because they correct me, they correct me because they love me. Those of you who are mothers know very well, those of you who are fathers know very well, when you correct your child, you correct them because you love them. And the psalmist is saying, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. The staff was used for correction and protection, so as a sheep, in the position of a sheep, he is declaring to God that this protection of life, this protection of God, brings comfort to his soul. In Psalm 23, it says, In the presence of my enemies, which represents the honor and exaltation of God in your life. When the psalmist says, You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies, it's God telling you that he will honor you, not just in the presence of your friends, but in the presence of your enemies. This is not vengeance. This is divine justice because there is a difference between vengeance and justice. Vengeance is when you take matters into your own hands, but justice is when the hand of God acts in your favor. Your enemies, those who mock you, despise you, humiliate you, those who look at you with disdain, those who look down on you or up at you, those who scorn you. These are the people who will sit at the table and witness the honor of God in your life so that the name of God may be glorified. That's why the psalmist says, You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. God will honor you, exalt you, 
and prosper you, and those who mocked will have to applaud. Those who slandered will have to glorify and spread the good news that God honored your life and gave you victory. And the psalm goes even further, stating that anointing my head with oil represents consecration. One day, your mind, where thoughts reside, will be filled with thoughts of faith, thoughts of conviction. You will understand perfectly and clearly that God is guiding your life and that He is your faithful shepherd, guiding your steps. Anointing my head with oil represents the Lord consecrating your life, declaring that you are anointed by God. You are anointed, my Lord. And the psalm continues, my cup overflows, which represents God's prosperity in your life. God is saying, I will not only fill your cup, but I will cause it to overflow. Imagine when you pour water into a cup, it fills up, but if you leave the tap running, it will overflow. There will be water inside and water on the outside. And when you hold a cup that's overflowing, you can feel what's on the inside and what's on the outside. Here, God is saying that He will overflow your cup. In other words, you will receive abundance both internally and externally. You will have prosperity in your life. God doesn't want to merely fill your cup, He wants it to overflow. He wants to bless you abundantly, not just for your own benefit, but also to bless others. Just like a cup overflowing with water, you will experience an overflow of God's blessings, pouring into your life from within and spilling over to touch the lives of those around you. God's prosperity will be evident in every aspect of your life. He is saying, perceive that when you hold a cup overflowing, you can feel what's inside and what's outside. That's what I will do with your cup. You will receive overflowing blessings, both inwardly and outwardly. Your cup will not merely be filled, it will overflow. God wants to bless your life with abundance, not only for your own sake, but also to bless others. He wants to pour out His blessings upon you, filling your cup until it overflows. Open your heart and receive this promise. Declare with faith, Lord, You are my shepherd. Overflow in my life. Fill every area of my life with Your prosperity and blessings. God desires to overflow in your home, your relationships, your finances, your health, and every aspect of your life. Embrace this promise and experience the overflowing goodness of God. In your life, there will be abundance, not only in your home but also to help your fellow human beings. Your table will be filled with plenty, not just for yourself but also for your friends and those in need. Your wardrobe will be abundant, providing for both yourself and those who require assistance. God will overflow, abundantly pouring out blessings. It signifies that you will have so much more, not just for yourself but also for others. God doesn't want to merely fill your cup, He wants it to overflow. He desires to make you prosper in every aspect of your life, financially, spiritually, materially, and in all ways. God wants to overflow in your home, your life, and every area. And even in the darkest times, you shall not be overcome. Embrace this promise, claim it with faith. Declare, Lord, you are my shepherd. Overflow in my life. God doesn't want to just fill you, he wants to overflow in your home, in your life, in every area. And even in the face of adversity, His abundant blessings will not fade away. Embrace the overflowing goodness of God in your life. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. This represents daily blessings. When the psalmist in Psalm 23 says, Surely, 
goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. He is declaring that God will be with you every day. It's a daily blessing. Goodness and mercy are present in your life every single day. On Monday, there's a blessing. On Tuesday, there's a blessing. On Wednesday, there's a blessing. On Thursday, there's a blessing. On Friday, there's a blessing from God. On Saturday, there's a blessing from God. On Sunday, every day of your life, mercy and goodness will be with you, guiding you, protecting you, and blessing you. This represents daily provision in your life. The Psalm 23 concludes by saying, And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. It represents the promise of eternity. The text tells you that you will be in God's house forever. You will find comfort in this good shepherd who watches over you, guides you, and ensures that you lack nothing. You can declare, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. You will not lack in your home. You will not lack because God will overflow in your storehouses and overflow in your life. Take hold of this word, this promise, this blessing, this gift from God in your life. I want to offer a special prayer for you. These were the verses of Psalm 23, and I explained each verse. Share it with a friend who may not fully understand the meaning of Psalm 23. This video will help you and others better comprehend the significance of each verse. In this very moment, I want to pray the prayer of Psalm 23. If you can, close your eyes and focus on God because we are going to pray in this moment. Leave your prayer requests in the comments, and I will present each prayer request to God, asking the Father to grant you what you need, what you require, and what you desire. Let's pray, let's enter into this covenant of prayer in this moment. Let us pray, Holy Spirit of God, Almighty Lord who created the heavens and the earth, you are our shepherd, and we shall not want. Lead us beside still waters, guide us gently, and provide for us. You are the faithful shepherd, you are the Almighty Lord, and I want to lift up the life of every woman listening to me. I want to present the life of every man listening to me in this moment, God. Perhaps I may not know them personally, but your Spirit knows their hearts. Your Spirit knows their hearts, so come and bless them, come and prosper them, come and bless their lives, the lives of those who are listening to this Psalm 23. May your blessings reach them, granting them victory, preparing a table before them in the presence of their enemies. Anoint their heads with oil, so that their cup may overflow. Overflow, Lord, in their financial lives, in their spiritual lives, in their lives, O Lord. May there be prosperity in their lives because you are their shepherd, and they shall not lack. So, Jesus, we want to exercise our faith in prayer, believing wholeheartedly that you will do the impossible. God, I present the marriage of this woman. Come and bless them. May the blessings of Psalm 23 be upon this marriage. May the blessings of Psalm 23 be upon this company. May the blessings of Psalm 23 be upon this work. Open the doors of employment. Open the doors of financial abundance. Lord, bless this couple who desires to get married. May your blessing, the blessing of Psalm 23, come to meet them so that they may attain this gift, God. For this man and this woman who are unemployed, open the doors of employment because you are our shepherd, and we shall not lack anything. We take hold of every blessing. We take hold of every victory that is recorded in Psalm 23. We take hold, Lord, of all the blessings declared in Psalm 23. 
May this Psalm 23, Lord, be fulfilled in our lives so that we may experience the prosperity of the sheep in the arms of the Good Shepherd. God, you are our refuge and strength. You are the faithful shepherd. In the name of Jesus, I present each prayer request, and may the blessing of Psalm 23 rest upon each prayer request. May you, Lord, prosper, honor, exalt, and grant your victory in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We ask and we thank you in advance. Amen. Thank God for the victories of Psalm 23 in my life, in the name of Jesus. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please subscribe. God bless you abundantly. A big hug. I greet all my brothers and sisters with the holy and sweet peace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. May God bless your life in a very special way, and may the blessings and victories of God be upon you and your family in the name of Jesus. Today, we will be praying Psalm 3, and this prayer will be a blessing to your life. Please stay until the end of this video because it will be a blessing for you and your entire family. Amen. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please subscribe now. Amen. I want to express my gratitude to all the friends who are part of this channel. To all of you who have made prayer requests, I am praying for all of you. Feel free to make your prayer request, no matter how simple it may be. If you need a blessing or a victory, comment below, and I will read and present all the prayer requests before God. May God greatly bless you and grant you great victories. God will speak to you in a very special way through Psalm 3. Pay attention because there is an answer from God for your life through this psalm. In verse 1 of Psalm 3, it says, Lord, how my foes increase. There are many who attack me. Perhaps you are going through a situation similar to the psalmist, facing persecutions and people rising against you. In this verse, David is talking about such experiences, saying, Lord, how my foes increase. There are many who attack me. There are moments in our lives when it seems like our adversaries are multiplying, people who rise against us, persecuting us, spreading gossip, speaking ill of us, and even harboring envy and ill intentions towards you. Life is a struggle, facing adversity with people persecuting you, even family members coming against you. But rest assured, my sister, one thing is certain, this battle will pass, and you will sing the victory anthem. The Lord will honor your faith, He will honor your prayer. The Bible says that those who are humiliated will be exalted by God. The humiliation, the persecution, the negative words spoken against your life can be great, but the honor of God will come to you. Those who stoned you will have to applaud your victory. Those who wanted to see you fall will witness you standing strong. Those who saw you weeping will see you smiling, and the name of Jesus will be glorified. That's exactly what the psalmist is saying in Psalm 3, Lord, how my foes increase. There are many who attack me. In verse 2, he says, Many say of me, God will not deliver him. These are the mockers, the people who look at you and say, There is no salvation for him, her. Perhaps you have heard this phrase before, there is no hope for you, give up. But God is saying, do not give up. There is still a solution. There is still hope. Do not be discouraged because I will intervene in this situation. Put all your faith and trust in what God is saying to your heart through his word. He will honor your faith. Persevere and remain steadfast on the rock, 
which is Jesus because the God of David is also your God, and he guarantees your victory. In verse 3, David, the psalmist, declares, But you, Lord, are a shield around me, my glory, the one who lifts my head. What a beautiful declaration! He acknowledges that the Lord is his shield, the one who protects and defends him, the one who advocates for his cause. My sister and brother, you have a faithful advocate who never loses a battle. From Genesis to Revelation, God has never lost a fight. He will not lose this battle, this struggle. The God who is with you makes you victorious. Lift up your head. They may be mocking you, but the answer comes from God. They may be envious of you, but it is God who provides the answer. You don't need to respond to those who defame you or persecute you. Let God answer for you. It is God who responds on your behalf, who speaks for you, and who acts on your behalf. The answer comes from God. That's why you should lift up your head, be of good courage, and maintain your faith, because God is your strong shield. He is the one who defends you with power, and he is present in your life. In verse 3, the psalmist says, But you, Lord, are a shield around me, my glory, and the one who lifts up my head. The one who lifts up my head means the one who honors my faith. The Bible says that those who are humiliated will be exalted. Perhaps you have experienced great humiliation, but the honor and exaltation of the Lord in your life will be even greater. Today may be a day of struggle, but tomorrow will be a day of victory. Embrace this word in the name of Jesus. In verse 4, the psalmist further says, I cried out to the Lord with my voice, and he answered me from his holy mountain. Here, David is saying that he cried out to the Lord, and the Lord heard him. There are moments in a believer's life when they think that God did not hear their prayers. Have you ever been through such a moment? Have you experienced a time when you faced such a great struggle that you wondered, Lord, are you listening to me? Are you truly hearing my prayer? Maybe you have gone through or are currently going through such a moment, feeling or thinking that God is not listening to you. But the psalmist, in Psalm 3, verse 4, says, I cried out to the Lord with my voice, and he heard me from his holy mountain. It may seem like everything is upside down, like everything is contradictory, the sea, the wind. But rest assured that in the midst of this storm, God is with you. In this desert, God is with you. In this battle, in this trial, God is with you, and victory is approaching. Get ready because you will share your testimony because the God of David is our God, and just as God exalted David, he will exalt our lives. Let us remain steadfast in faith because God hears our prayers. He does not reject prayer. If you have prayed, God has heard your prayer, and He will provide. He will bring healing, renewal, and victory into your life, your home, and your family. Claim this word in the name of Jesus. God is indeed listening to your prayer, yes, God is hearing your request, and in His perfect timing, in His appointed hour, He will make the supernatural happen. Through the eyes of faith, I can already see God moving heaven on your behalf. Embrace the victory. And in verse 5, the psalmist further says, I lay down and slept, I woke again because the Lord sustained me. Let's repeat this verse loudly, let's repeat it together. It says, I lay down and slept, I woke again because the Lord sustained me. Once again, I lay down and slept, I woke again because the Lord sustained me. Do you know what this means? 
It means that you need to sleep peacefully. Those debts, those problems, that difficult situation that is stealing your sleep, sleep peacefully because you will resolve this situation in the name of Jesus. Yes, this problem will be solved. Have faith, do not lose hope. You will overcome this adversity, and then you will come back to this channel to share your victorious testimony. Get ready because your blessing will be great. Do not let the worries of this world consume you. Trust in God's providence and His perfect timing. He is with you every step of the way. Let go of the worries that steal your sleep. Rest peacefully, just like the psalmist in Psalm 3. I lay down and slept, I woke again because the Lord sustained me. God is the one who sustains you, who holds your hand and says, My child, I am your God, your shepherd, your healer, your Lord, and I will never leave you alone. I will not forsake you, says the Lord. Put your head on the pillow and sleep with a clear conscience because God is taking care of everything. I know it's not always easy when we face difficult situations. We lie down and keep thinking, hours passing by, robbing us of sleep. But we must trust in the Lord. We cannot allow these adversities to steal our sleep. Sleep peacefully because tomorrow is a new day, and the Lord is already working in your favor. When God works for us, our eyes may not see it, but He is working in secret. He is working in the unseen, and He will honor you publicly. All eyes will see God's honor in your life. Believe with all your heart. And in verse 6, the psalmist boldly declares, I will not be afraid of ten thousands of people who have set themselves against me all around. Look at the courage of David. When God is with us, we become courageous, don't we? When we are certain that God is with us, we have no fear because the one who is with us is greater. Do not be afraid of curses, of spells, of enchantments, or of any of those things. Do not fear. Some people are afraid of the devil, afraid of darkness, afraid of the enemy, afraid of the evil works done against them. But do not be afraid because the one who is with you is greater than evil. The one who is with you is greater than darkness. The one who is with you is greater than demons. The one who is with you is the creator of heaven and earth. Do not be afraid because God is with you. Sleep peacefully. Rest in peace. Do as the psalmist did in Psalm 3 when thousands of people rose against him. You are protected by a strong shield that does not break, and the name of that shield is Jehovah Jesus. He is before you, and no harm will come to your dwelling, nor any plague to your house. You are under divine protection. Therefore, rest, trust, and calm your heart. Do not be afraid. That's what the psalmist is saying in verse 6. I will not be afraid of ten thousands of people who have set themselves against me all around. And in verse 7, he says even more, Arise, O Lord. Save me, O my God. For you strike all my enemies on the cheek, you break the teeth of the wicked. Here, David is asking God to rise, to act in his favor. He is not giving a command because we are servants who receive orders from God. But David is humbly asking. He is saying, God, arise, O Lord. Arise, O Lord, and save me. You can say this with me, Arise, O Lord, and save me. God is rising from his throne to give you victory. He is rising to give you help. He is rising to give you healing. 
He is rising to open closed doors. He is rising to bring salvation to your home, to your family. He is rising to give you victory. In verse 8, the psalmist concludes Psalm 3 by saying, Salvation belongs to the Lord, your blessing be on your people. The blessing of the Lord is upon his people. The blessing of the Lord is upon me. The blessing of the Lord is upon you. The blessing of the Lord is upon us. Salvation comes from the Lord. The blessing of the Lord is upon us, and this blessing brings peace, hope, and confidence. With that, we can rest and calm our hearts because God takes care of us. So, calm your heart. If you're feeling any anguish in your heart, place your hand on your chest, and I will pray for you so that all anguish disappears. If you have any illness, place your hand on the affected area, and I will pray for you so that the illness disappears. Let us pray the prayer of Psalm 3, asking the Lord for His provision, protection, and victory. Let us pray in this moment. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Marvelous God, sublime and eternal Lord, in your holy and omnipotent presence, we are here to thank you for all that you have done and for all that you will do. We also humbly ask you, God, to remove all anguish and sadness from our hearts, to disappear in the name of Jesus. May every illness vanish from this body in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. God, in the name of Jesus, we ask for your provision, your protection, your blessing, and your victory. Send forth your mighty angels into this house, bringing deliverance, cutting the ties, and undoing every entanglement. Lord, remove the obstacles from our path, open the closed doors. God, I ask for your financial blessing, your financial provision. The spiritual blessing, your spiritual blessing, be upon every area of the lives of your servant and those who listen to me. Bring your blessing, bring your love, bring your shower of victory upon our lives, Lord. We present our families before you, Lord. We present our health, we present everything we are and everything we have. Multiply the blessings, multiply the victories, multiply the achievements, multiply the finances of your people, Lord, in the name of Jesus, so that we may say as the psalmist said. I lay down and slept, I woke again, for the Lord sustained me, Psalm 3 verse 5. Guard us in the fortress of your power, Father. Deliver us from all evil, God, in the name of Jesus. I present marriages before you, God. I present finances. I present the sentimental lives of your people. Bring restoration to families, bring financial restoration, God. We place all our hope, all our faith in you. We put everything into your hands. Bring a special victory, especially in these days, Lord. Open the doors of provision and financial, spiritual, and material blessings in our lives. Father, grant us all the blessings and promises that are recorded in the Bible. Grant us the blessing of prosperity, the blessing in our families, in the name of Jesus. To this troubled and anguished heart, I ask you, Lord, to remove all anguish, all affliction, in the name of Jesus. Come with provision, God, and grant a special victory in the lives of your servant and those who listen to me at this moment. 
May all the giants fall, may all the walls crumble, may all evil fall, may all malignant forces fall to the ground, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we ask and thank you in advance because yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. God, in the name of Jesus, pour upon our hearts peace, tranquility of spirit, gratitude, strength, and faith. Multiply and increase our faith, strength, and anointing to march in your presence with power and authority. By your Spirit, make us invisible to our material and spiritual enemies, placing us in the realm of invisibility. We ask for your benevolence, your mercy, and we thank you in the name of Jesus. Thanks be to God. Amen. My sister and my brother, take possession of your victory. Take possession of the blessings of Psalm 3 in your life, in your home, in your family, in your story, and remember that you were born to overcome and live every promise of God.